Today's drone that we're gonna build is an Armiton Marmot. So this one is a relatively new frame. And from the one that is not near me that I just built somewhat recently, I can tell you this is just like the Chameleon, but with a lot of other things fixed about it. So the other things in front of me right now are what I am going to jam into this, I think. So for right now, again, we've got the Armiton Marmot frame. I have a CL Racing flight control board. This is some 4-in-1 ESC that I had laying around from SpeedX. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do this one or not because it's not like the ones that we're doing currently, but maybe that doesn't matter because it's just the idea that the things gotta be, uh, you gotta go to a data sheet to figure out what you're supposed to do to put it all together. But the typical one that I've been using in this combination is the CL Racing flight control board with the CL Racing 4-in-1 45 amp, that's pretty nice, 4-in-1 ESC here. So I've got that. Uh, Fox Ear Predator uh, Mini, this is the one that, that we're using, and some prop, I think they're dull, who knows what they are, 50, 45s, 50, 50, something like that. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I'm, eh, let's talk about this in a second here. How about right now? Um, well, the, the, the requisite RXSR FreeSky receiver, that's going in here uh, as well. And then um, for, for, for the VTX, for the video transmitter, I am currently kind of torn between using the Mach 3 and the TBS for no real specific reason other than this one's out of the box laying around and I kind of need to do something with it and this one's nice and in the package. I don't know if I want to open it up yet. Don't really know. Also, this one here has got the SMA connector on it and I really freaking hate these. You know, this is no good. Um, the way that it mounts is not good. I know it seems like it makes sense, but it puts a hard point on the outside of the quad and the hard point on the outside of the quad is hard, duh, so it's going to get broken, it's gonna break. So I really like the MMCX connector, not just because of the connector and the way that it connects, but because what you plug into it is typically, hopefully, the actual antenna, and then as it comes out of the quad, it dangles and flops around, and you don't have this hard point. So if you were to crash and hit something, it just wiggles around, as opposed to hitting that damn SMA connector and snapping the flipping antenna off every single time. All right, then let's get rid of all of that there. We can stick this up here, put that over there, and let's just deal with this thing right now. Get rid of that garbage, garbage, garbage. The garbage ran away. So, <clears throat> oh, this damn stable. Okay, so looking at this right off the get-go, whoa, wow, look at that. They've even laser engraved a part mark. Cool. The, the thing I noticed about this was the thing we were doing with the Chameleon uh, a long time ago was we'd break it out of the, 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 the bag and then we'd take it out into the shop and we'd put a little bit of a, a radius on the edge here so you don't catch on it. Uh, besides just feeling nice, by putting a radius on your composite uh, parts, if there is any type of an impact, it increases the likelihood that that, that, that that device, that, that entity will glance off of it and shear away, less inclined as you know you would see with a with a flat face that it would catch and start to delam in here. So this little subtle extra piece of work by putting a little bit of a chamfer fillet on the edge there, good another good touch with this. But as you can see, if you've built or looked at or done or dealed with a chameleon, Armiton chameleon, this is Still basically the same idea, single piece. There's a lot of holes here. Like I said, a lot of holes for zip ties. It does kind of distort the load path through here just a tiny little bit by having some of these here. I don't know if that's entirely terribly too different 
from the chameleon. I got some above me. I don't feel like going and grabbing them. But all the same, by the time this is all pinned together, it should be pretty strong with the, with the lid on it. I, I, could, I could right now snap that without too much issue, but I don't think most of our impact is going to be like this. It's going to be more like that, you see. So that's great. Here's our little lid and our little crud that comes with it. Now, get into our little bag of parts. I can tell already, look at this. This is really nice. I wish they would have included this with the older... Um, Chameleon, it's a little file kit. It's a, it's the smallest little silly little file kit, but it actually, oh, it's not even a kit, it's just one. It works really good. It works really good for for scraping and cleaning off, uh, not cleaning off, but for rounding over any edges. But what usually happens, what we're using our own file set for is filing this down because the Chameleon frame notoriously had issues with this weird little spacer that was here. The spacer, by the way, was because the head was from the Armaton rooster and that had add-on arms, which created a double thickness, so you needed to have a spacer, so they created a little bit of a, a shim there. Anyways, all the holes didn't quite line up, so you'd have to, to file it. So that's kind of a nice thing that they did here. So let's put that away, put it there, and then inside the bag, see what we've got. Stickers, stickers, stickers. I have got entirely enough Armiton stickers. Uh, these, since it's here, I talk about this. Um, these are usually it feels it feels better. It feels okay. Uh, it feels almost like it feels like a pretty decent faux leather. Um, I kill these all the time. The ones that I've been liking a lot. They don't have the same shape. They're a little bit thicker. Let me grab one. Jumping ahead a little bit, here is what the thing looks like finished. Ta-da, done. Um, Lumineer. Lumineer and other people, I'm sure, make these straps, and they are supposedly Kevlar reinforced. And, you know, true or how much or whatever, they have survived a lot better than these have. So I would recommend getting these types of straps for your batteries. And I'm also... Um, Pretty big fan of double strapping the battery because with one you get this kind of pivot point and depending upon how much you're wiggling around, you get that battery to sling a little bit sideways, chucks it out and you know, the rest, right? So these are good. Uh, what do we want to do? Okay, so here is what I want to talk about there and then let's get into this. And here is all the, here's, here's half of the, uh, the, the head that's going to go on here. I got this backwards, upside down. Um, so our, our head's going to go on here, and then we're going to have some, some... Nope, these are the, the pivots, and here's the, the back pieces. And here's these really interesting new camera mounts that they have here. Very, very interesting setup. So we'll show you that in a second. So looking at everything right here, I'm trying to decide, you know, what should I do first? So of course, you can come here and you can follow the instructions. But... They're not really exactly instructions. Usually, at best, you're going to get kind of an exploded diagram. Some companies don't even include it. This can be daunting. It can upset you, but you know, try not to get too grumpitated about this whole thing because what, what's going on is this is an advanced hobby. It, it's getting easier to put together all the time. Um, but then again, new things come out that make it harder again. We're always a little bit on the fringe, on edge, on, on you know, the capabilities of what we can get across. This is kind of like I described it as a bit of a race car. And we're trying to do things a little bit faster, a little bit farther, a little bit better than somebody else along the way. This isn't your toy model kit. It's just not that way. We will have more and more of those out, you know, certain companies maybe work more towards that direction, but a lot of them, the greater portion of the, the higher speed freestyle race drones, they kind of assume that you're already into at least technology, right? So you've got some, some soldering skills possibly, you got some background with data sheets, you know that if you can't find it, you've got you know, search engine skills, you can go find the information you need and that's not a, a stress to you, okay? So anyways, that's the instructions over here. When I start thinking about this, if this was a brand new drone 
and uh, not not taking it from the point of view I've never done it before, but you know, let's say I've got a new drone sitting here. What's what's what? So I threw it kind of out here like this. We've got the the little tail pieces down here. We've got the head that's up here. This is a little foam piece. We don't know this need this right now, but here's the lid for it, and here's these these little bits. What what should I put together? Assemble first. Well. Sometimes, just to, to throw this out here, with the chameleon, a lot of times, and the, the rooster, of course, because it's the same head, I would build the, the head of the drone first and not even attach it to the body because it made it easier for getting the camera installed. It gets a little bit crampy in there sometimes, especially with the wire and the JST connectors that you got to deal with. So maybe you do that first. But also, you still want to get the thing put together so that you can fit in all of your electronics or at least size it all up. So in this particular case, we have a 4-in-1 ESC and a stack on top of that with our flight control board, right? So we've got that situation. How tall is that? Sometimes you want to get a video transmitter that actually, they, they have these, if you didn't know this, they have the video transmitter that comes as a 30 millimeter hole size, they have the, the 20 as well, that you mount on top. So now you get a triple stack, one, two, three layers that you have to stack up on top here. Do you have the room? When it's all put together here and the lid is on top, do you have the room for that? You might need to you know, sacrifice something and switch over maybe to four separate ESCs possibly. So that's first. So let's, let's, let's tear some of this out here. Let's just go for it and they'll probably do something stupid along the way, but let's, let's just dig into it. Get all the garbage out of the way. Before you just, uh, before you take everything out, I'd probably stick with one thing. Look at these, these are very shiny. Okay, this is helpful, right? We can look at how it goes together. But uh, what's supposed to happen here? Well, if you're looking at this diagram, the camera here needs to fit between those little braces, brackets, extensions right there. So here is our camera. Now this is a mini, by the way. And so they are, where's my scale here? You want to check this out, right? We just had this problem recently. So you measure your camera and this is 22 millimeters wide. Okay, will that fit in here, right? Is this one going to be okay? Now. If, if that's not going to be good, then you have to, like in the case of the uh, Talon build that um, I, I was doing the other day and screwed up on, that one is a 5-inch drone, but they actually, on the version 2, made the frame so much smaller that it won't even take a mini. It has to go to a micro, so it's 19 millimeter width. So make sure you check that before you, maybe you buy these. So you see... Anyways, 22 millimeters, this is going to fit in here. There's two holes on the side of your camera. One is going to hold it. The other one is there so that it can, it, um, it'll pivot off of this, let's say one hole here, and then you'll anchor it down with the other. So this piece right here, it's, it's really interesting what they did. They, they put a lot of thought into this. That, so this, this hole right here is where you're going to go into, you know, one, one hole of the camera and the other one's going to allow you to pivot it and then lock it down and that's that's been pretty standard for most of the drones but what's really interesting about this what they decided to do is they added a second piece that you can't see right here right now but i'm going to bring this one in to try to show you oh i got the damn propellers on you're not going to be able to see this i don't think this this piece fits right in here right if you can see that and then back here They've got these little pieces here, and they're going to sit like this. And now there's going to be some fasteners right in here that go right up in this front, and I can unscrew th this, and then the whole entire head assembly can rock back and forth. And that's great. That works really good. So that's what's going on. Now to get this all put together, the next thing I'm going to have to have is this little brace right here, which is hiding in there, okay? So let's get that out. So this, 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 this is our assembly. Make sure you get the sides, the shape, oriented the right way there. You see how this is gonna go? It's a little bit, it's a little bit tough. So uh, 
I will be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. You don't need to watch me do this. Make sure that you find the right fasteners for it. So right up in here, we have number five. So these are going to be our M3 eight millimeter screws. If you don't have a metric caliber or at least a metric scale, get one because you need to have this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna find my eight millimeter fasteners, which look like they're probably these ones right here. There we go, that'll do. Get a couple of those out. Before you go flying or after you go flying, always do essentially a nut check to make sure that everything on here is snug before you go. Otherwise, <laughs> you wonder how come your quad starts running funny because you know your motor has got two and a half screws missing and is wobbling all over the place. So I think this is probably okay, but you can see what's gonna happen, that this will end up sitting right in here and you'll be able to pivot it up and down, okay? So we've got a few fasteners that we gotta find to go in there. And those are going to be, oh yeah, here we go. I honestly, I, I haven't even ever looked at the instructions. Um, so they're right here, those, those three right here. So these are twos. These are gonna be M3 six millimeters. Those are probably those right there. Yep, that's a six. Yeah, I know I said I would be right back and it would all be done, but I decided to just keep talking because there was too many weird little snags along the way that I thought I would address. I know, by the way, I'm not zoomed in terribly tight because I needed to be able to show you everything. So hopefully it is coming across okay. Now this, should I mount this onto the quad and then mount this on here, or should I put it all together right now? Now this is going to fit right in here like so. And if you notice, this is threaded here, and this is not. <laughs> this is actually a smart, good addition because we've had different quad frames where they thread both sides of something. Like, you know, they didn't understand that you can't do that. It gets stuck, it doesn't tighten down. So however you wanna work it, you know, here or there either. Now, is this gonna be in the way of any of my construction? If you're not so certain, examine this, look at it and go, hmm, how hard is this to just slip it off and on? Is, is there anything in this process here that if I try to assemble this onto this first before I slot in, is it going to get in the way? And in this case, everything's fine. So we can go ahead and take this off the, the frame and get these stuck in here first. Again, a little bit of a challenge. You always seem to have to work a lot of these fasteners, these locations at kind of an angle. So you kind of get in here, but you see it's not it's not optimal, but there's no real other way to go about doing this. So leave that kind of loose, slide it down, get the next one in there. Still slides. Uh, don't make it too loose because you're gonna lose all the screws again. Okay, so here's this. So this guy, like I said, is gonna sit right there and that's good. I can easily take him away and I could fit the camera in here now and work on it and tilt it upside down and get at the wires and the JST connectors, however I see fit. But when I need to put it on here for fitment, not a big deal. So having said that, we'll go for those next. That's gonna go there like this. And what's this? Is this this an M6 as well? Eight. So that's an eight. That's one of these guys. Oh, I found the hole that I made. So I just need a couple of those. Put that guy out of the way. Stuff this up like so. Take this. Zip that in there. Pow. And this. Fingers. And then 
your hole. Put it right there. Okay. Um, these are ones that are probably Loctite, but I'm just going to go ahead and crimp them down right now because I don't have any Loctite near me. I'm good with that. I know that those are probably okay where they're at, unless for some reason they don't line up with the top. Okay, so get that kind of sunk in there. If you want to throw a fastener in there, that's absolutely fine. Um, but I want to get this out of here. So this is going to show us whether or not our stack of components is going to fit. So, oops, get that in the proper place here. And then figure out which <clears throat> the hell way the thing goes. See? Okay, so we'll get this in here, put this in place. I would probably think that the base would be the more critical component, but I want to make sure that I can easily take this off and on. Because uh, like I said, in the other one, for whatever reason, it was tight. And um, it might have been because it shifted. We had a little bit of play in the, the hole itself. So before I tighten the head down and commit to its position, I want to put this in here. And again, it doesn't need to be super duper tight. So this is good for me now. So now come back down here and tighten these up. These, again, are ones that probably could use some Loctite because they will probably vibrate out. There we go. Okay. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to kind of fly by the seat of my pants a little bit here and talk about what the points are here rather than the specifics of what we find inside these boxes. Okay, we've got, we've got some components that will help us with our current task, but they might not be good enough. So I have determined after, you know, a period of time of building one or two or who cares, whatever, that they take certain types of fasteners. So I find those fasteners and start creating a box that has all that stuff in there. So this comes with this in the flight controller kit. The other thing we have is our 4-in-1 ESC. This needs to be mounted as well, so it frequently has some fasteners. So let's knock all this stuff out and look what we have here. So cap, bit, bit, bunch of stuff here. Here's the 4-in-1 ESC right there, but here's all the doohickeys that come with it. And this this is where the longer fasteners come from. You see that one hiding in the bag there? So which one can we use? Let's, let's, so let's broaden this topic up a little bit. Yes, I have these ones and I have those ones, but what do I want to have happen here? Well, let me find my kit again. The thing I started to say is what they used to do is they would give you these little standoffs that I, I, I always call them like Legos because they are just short, and, and these are a different one. These are even better than what we used to get, but they would fit these things together. So you would, what you would do is, and you still do this a lot, but you would, there'd be a hole through, let's say that's a frame, and I'd put this down here and I'd put a fastener through underneath to anchor this. Then I'd put the device on top of this, and then I'd cap it with another Lego, right? So I'd screw this onto it here like so, and then stack the next and stack the next. I don't like this idea because the uh, the fasteners, these these standoffs, if you will, by the time you put the board on there, especially if it has some shock mount already, we don't have enough thread here. We never have enough thread. And so I never know what the people are thinking when they put this all together, but it doesn't work. And even if it does kind of work, I don't like the idea of the very limited amount of thread engagement there. You get like maybe a turn on there before that you run out of space. What I want to have happen if this needs to go in here, which it does, this needs to go in here some way or another, something like that. Uh, I have to um, keep these things spaced apart a little bit because there's always, you know, a various amount of different things on here. The ARM Cortex processor and of course the SD card holder right here, they start to get higher. And some things have this and some things don't, and some things have it in different places. Some people have this connector on the bottom side. So what I'm getting at is this width that we need to have separated underneath here varies by different types of device. This ESC has got a big 
um, heat sink, if you will, and kind of protection on the top here. And so that creates a height that we need to clear. We don't want any metal, even if it's painted, because it might get scratched away. But uh, we don't want uh, anything that could be conductive touching anything up here. Probably, of course, right? Uh, so I need some standoffs. I also need some standoffs off of whatever is the bottom device. If it's a four in one ESC or if it's your flight control board right on here and you've got ESCs on the arms, I need to lift this off the carbon fiber frame because never forget this, carbon fiber carbon is absolutely conductive. It's very conductive. And this is not coated that I can possibly see. I don't think so. One of the things I do when I make composite anything, if it's gonna be around electrical, you'll use a, a coating of thin fiberglass on either side. So it reduces the chance of, you know, any kind of conductivity there. So that's kind of handy, but these probably don't have anything like that. So let's just assume by the way, that they don't. So we have to prop this up, have to, have to, have to prop this up off of the board. Uh, a Talon, an older, one of the original versions of Talon had the vertical arms. One person that I know of, um, it was working fine and they hit a hard landing, right? You know, they came down flat, but it flexed the arms up like this just a little bit. And it was just enough, you know, limited gap underneath there that those arms came up and they touched right across all the myriad of bypass capacitors that were on, well, like these guys right here, but they're in different places. They were all over the bottom of this board and the thing burst into literally flames. Okay. So there, there's my rant on that. They have to be spaced. So now what does that mean? So how do we get this to happen? Right? Well, and we've got so many doohickeys and thingamabobs here. And so every single drone is kind of different as far as what I am allowed to have. And I have gone so far, you know, so, so much hate <laughs> or something that I will cut or file down one of these longer ones just so I could get a right spacer. What is the maybe better thing? I don't know if you'd say it's the bestest thing, but if you have a 3D printer, spacers. Print yourself some damn spacers, right? The ones that are just the right height because here's the other part of this wrinkle is that if you use just what you got, it might bring it up too much. And why do I say too much? Well, because then you stack the first one, then you stack the next one, and now we're out of space because of the, the, the size of, you know, what we have for this dimension to the top lid. So what I wanted to do, what I thought would be better, especially than the Legos was in, in all the things that come with it is to get a longer fastener. Okay. Let me just show you the thought. So you bring this up here. Okay. And now that I have this here, now I have a pin. Think of it just like a pin and I could just start dropping all this stuff on. Add a spacer, add a thing, add a spacer, add a thing. No big deal, all in piece. Next thing, if I tip this to the side and we'll just get rid of that. If I tip it to the side and I put this on here, can you see that? It's too tall, it's too tall. Here, if I just move it off to the side, it's too tall by probably two millimeters right here. So that isn't going to fit so good, right? But it's plastic, so I can just clip it when I'm done. So that's actually not a big deal. But that is the reason that I bought all of these so that you could have this and you could dial in the right height. So these ones here are 20 millimeters and they will go up and fit pretty much handy dandy, you see, right there, if I have enough room to get everything on there. So this is kind of the first part of my point, is if you don't have the things that you need, buy more. That's what this hobby thing is about, you know? It's not about take this thing out of the box and damn it, I expected this thing to work and just go together, piece of cake. I'm supposed to have perfect instructions. I'm supposed to have this company tell me exactly what I'm supposed to do with every single other company in the world and how it connects to my motor sound assembly. No, 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 no. This is, this is, this is a, an electronic learning type hobby experience and you're, you're not gonna get any of that. So you have to think on your own and realize that I need something different, so go ahead and get it. So for now, I think what I'm going to do, because I think it's important that I work with a little bit to some degree, the existing components. So I can show you how that works with this and that, you know, just like I said, 
I wanted to do overview of the concept. I think hopefully you get the gist of what I'm trying to say, but I'm gonna go ahead and use these plastic fasteners so when it's done, I can show you how I put it all together uh, and we'll run into any snags along the way. Now, what I want to see though, I, want, I still wanna take and assess what I have for all of these. Good, so what I'm hoping is I have four plastic nuts short four plastic nuts right here, here's the long ones. I can use those for spacers if I need. What I wanna use these for, what I wanna use these for is to anchor this pin and be the lower spacer because it usually gives me enough of a rise to get the clearance that I need off of the carbon, right? These end up making it quite a bit too tall and I might, I'm worried that I'm gonna run out of space at the top. But before I suck up my fasteners that are designed for the very top, I wanna make sure that I have some more in my other kit. So these short ones here, I have as well in the ESCs, so I'm set. If you happen to have this current setup, okay? So I'll take the plastic fasteners and then I will run these on here. The thing I've also noticed about this is, is these are often not threaded so good because it's plastic and they just don't, I don't know what it is, little plastic hangers. Like this one here is really tight. You're not gonna, you know, spin these things on here. Also, if you put too much force on this, you're gonna twist that, that fastener. You're just gonna break it right off. So here's what I wanna see. I wanna run this all the way down. And then I wanna, you know, just one will suffice, maybe a couple. I wanna get that down on here and then take my four in one ESC, if this is the one I'm going to use. I wanna watch out for all the MOSFETs underneath there, and I want to slide this down and see if I have that space right there, do I have enough clearance? And it looks like even if I squish down on this a bit, th these, this particular one happens to have a shock mount on the ESC, which I don't really know why that is, but sure. Uh, I'm gonna have plenty of room right there. So this will work. So I'll go ahead and continue to put these in here. Okay, there we go. So that's good. Then we'll get our ESC, whichever one you're gonna use. So here is, if you can see that through the shiny there, this is the CL Racing one, which I'll probably use later. But right now I'm using this just for fitment, uh, which I think this will suffice as an analog. So I set that one down in place. And then now I have to deal with this one. And if you just wanna find a spacer right now, you don't have to put the little shock mounts in here. But you can see this. A lot of people ask that. It's like, oh, what's what's the deal with that thing? Well, that's just the hanging chad. You know, that was from the injection mold. You don't you don't need that. Just get rid of it. So take this, pinch it. This is about the best I can offer for this. Pinch it and stuff it through, and then you might be able to grab the other side and just kind of pull it in, like so. You might need to use um, some long nose pliers or something to get a hold of it. Again, pinch it. Pinch it, stuff it through, hold it in place, grab it. It's usually pretty grippy, you know, it's silicone, so you can kind of get a hold of it. But there be my technique. Uh, sometimes you gotta take this and kind of poke it through. Okay, that's good. Oh, that's got the thing on it. Get rid of the thing. Ugh. Okay, good. Now, when we actually get to mounting this, I wanna have you pay more attention to the direction. Most flight control boards are gonna have an arrow on them, the point front. On this one with CL Racing, for the whole time I've known them that they've done this, they write their name up at the top, and if you look at it, it kinda looks like a triangle if you wanna think of that way, CL Racing. It, that's the front, USB over on the side. Look for obvious stuff, like they're not gonna stick the USB up here towards the camera, because how the hell are you gonna get at that? So we'll take that and we set this on here first without any spacers. And if I cram it down, uh, yeah, you can see, is that really gonna matter? Is it really, really gonna matter? I've got something. I've got the ARM Cortex processor hitting right on top of the metal down there. Is it gonna conduct anything? Probably not, but over here is the SD card. 
Now, I want to put some kind of a spacer on this. So let's look at the height now. Are we adding a third thing to this? No, we're not. We know that these fasteners are a little bit tall, but even with that height right there, if I put this across it, even with the other side, if you can see what I'm trying to show you there, we've got a lot of room. We've got a lot of room there. So I shouldn't have any problem propping this up. Remember, we've got to have enough room to get a nut on there. But could I get one of these in there? Could I get one of those fasteners in there? Let's give that a try. That's almost optimal because it is plastic. It's easy to whip on here. Um, you do have to thread it down. So that's, I don't know, good, bad, or different. You know, holds the ESC on there from running away. But um, again, if you've got a printer or something else, start accumulating spacers. So this is interesting. I was just turning this down. I think it's going to be fine. But uh, you can see what I was talking about. As I tighten this down, I can feel the corner of this nut hitting off of the side of this frame here. So depending upon what you have, there, there's a standard for the hole sizes, but there's not really exactly a standard for how far away to stay the hell away from that hole. They'll have kind of a ring around there that's sort of their you know keep away zone, but they're not really paying attention to the fact that you might put you know a nut down there. So I'm expecting this is going to do the same thing. So you see, it's really going to hit right in there. Okay, but it's going to work. Did I just put two different sizes on here? Are these different? Oh, butts. So look at this. So these fasteners are a little bit shorter that come with the ESC. Uh, I'm going to swap these out. Okay, that seems roughly snug. So now I can place this on here and start assessing. So this is going to have still plenty of clearance and I'll be able to put a nut on top of there. So here is what will happen. I'm not going to cut it right now because I'm not certain if I want to use that 4-in-1 ESC. I think I'm probably going to use the one in the bag. But you see what I'm talking about? I'll, I'll put this one here, I'll scrunch it down a little bit, and then that leftover excess on the top here, I'm just going to cut that off. So that is how I determine how everything's going to go together, if it's going to go together, what to do with all these parts and pieces. The next thing I would probably do after this is get my motors. I would install them as well and just let the wires dangle because I'll get to them later. <music>